Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you with my very first video on my brand new desktop. Sort of. So, if you want to go over specs real quick, the search bar on here doesn't work. Um, we're going to go DX Diag and I'll show off a little bit for a second. But this entire video is going to be based around um, setting up my computer to get back into modding things like Android games and Minecraft and Combat Arms if possible. TPS is definitely up there. I want to get back into creating TPS and I'll explain what that is once we get to that point. But yeah, this is my de new desktop of 5600X 6 core with 16 gigs of RAM that will be doubled soon enough and an AMD RX 570 GPU. Um, eventually I'll get some gameplay started. I have a couple series in mind, um, something I'm calling the get good series where I take games that I enjoy sort of, uh, games that I just play for fun that I would say I'm good, but not really good. So I want to actually be competitive in some of these games. For example, Trackmania or PvP in Minecraft. Or just, in all honesty, uh, I've never even beaten Minecraft. So I'll probably do that. But without further ado, let's get back into what this video is actually about. Setting up my computer to get back into modding all the things. Because I get questions all the time. Like, what tools do I use? How do I know what I need? How do I do this? How do I do that? Um, teach me, a oh wise one. <laughs> uh, it, it happens more often than you think. So I have a drive that is, I'm basically going to dedicate to this sort of stuff. And it's just storage one. Uh, not the greatest hard drive in the world, but it works. So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it modding. I like to organize all my stuff. I like to be very organized on my computer, not in real life, just on my computer so I know where to find things so I can be fast. So I like to even number my folders. Uh, tools. And then we're going to call the next folder games. And then the next folder is going to be uh, misc apps. Because it's not always going to be uh, gaming stuff that I want to modify. Maybe I want to save the apps that I download from other places like Spotify hacked APKs and stuff like that. In my games folder, I'm going to make um, iOS, Android, uh, PC. There we go. Because I'm going to be doing a little bit of everything. I want to do some old school modding because I'm going to get a 32-bit phone from my boss. Uh, there's some old school iOS app modding that I want to get back into because I enjoyed it way back in the day. One of the very first big mods I ever made was taking the game PBA Challenge, which is a bowling game for mobile, and I figured out how to modify the game's XML files and plist files to make my own levels, to make my own characters, to make my own bowling balls, to make my own power-ups to even have infinite currency, right down to my own storyline. And I started making my own tournaments and everything in the game. And it was a ton of fun. And I want to get back into that. I also want to get into modifying old school Tap Tap Revenge, just so like that knowledge isn't lost. I want to get into, and that's going to be iOS as well, but that game also only runs on 32-bit iOS, which, if you don't know, that's not possible anymore. If you try to download Tap Tap Revenge Metallica, one of the best games that ever existed for iOS, you can't install it on your iPhone 7. You can't install it on your iPhone 8. If you have iOS, I believe it's 11 or 12 or newer, you cannot install 32-bit apps. It just does not work, which is one thing also that I think Android has going for it, as well as Windows PCs. Uh, I think Macs can still run 32-bit software if it's an Intel-based CPU platform. But the new Apple M1 ARM chips have a little bit more of, uh, trouble with it. They emulate it the best they can, though. But 
anything 32-bit iOS, you have to have an old device. Your best bet is like an iPod Touch, in all honesty, or an older iPad. Um, but if you want to do Tap Tap Revenge specifically, I recommend an iPod Touch or an iPhone uh, running something like iOS 10, to be honest. But we're going to get into the tools. So a lot of the tools I actually usually just install because it makes them system-wide at that point. So I have HXD Hex Editor. That's my favorite Hex Editor. I have JPEX's Flash Decompiler. I use that a lot for the Nitto stuff. I don't remember installing this. Did it come with my computer or does it not work? Okay, that app doesn't open. Okay, whatever. Anyway, I'll just get it off of a flash drive from another computer. Um, anyway, we're going to... I'll remove that later. Notepad++ is another huge thing. Definitely recommend having a VPN, and this is not a transfer into a sponsor. Do not click off this video. I promise you it's not a transfer into a sponsor. I'm not that popular. Um, but I do recommend a VPN because sometimes you end up searching some sketchy places. Some of my favorite places to go uh, on the internet for getting information or any kind of certain torrent for specific subjects and things like that are, I'll be honest with you, Russian torrent trackers. Uh, some of the coolest stuff I've ever found comes from Russian torrent sites. Uh, RU Tracker being a big one. Um, there's also some others, to be honest with you, that I've found that I won't say the names of here because whatever. Anyway, and the other thing that I obviously have is Visual Studio. That is a huge thing you're going to need. Windows kits? Hmm. Oh, yeah, the other new thing with Windows that's really cool. I don't know if you got how many of you guys watch my shorts. Oh, I don't have the new CMD update on this computer. That's weird. So my work computer got a CMD update where it's tabs and you can run Ubuntu software and you can run a whole bunch of like Android scripts and stuff like that. But let's get into the tools that can't be installed. So first one that comes to mind is DNSpy for doing any kind of .NET uh, editing. Um, another one would be Quick BMS, which is used for decompiling um, specific files. Uh, I'll go over that in a minute. And there's some other stuff that I'm totally forgetting off the top of my head. I hate when I go to make these videos because I forget things. <laughs> but I can cheat. My laptop I was using is right next to me because I use my laptop to watch YouTube and take the burden off of my desktop if I want to play like a game but have YouTube on the side. Also, I can't honestly figure out how to plug my headset into my new desktop because it's a headphone microphone combo, but my desktop only has headphone and microphone separately, both on the motherboard and on my front IO. I don't know how I can split it up. But I'm going to use my laptop to cheat a little bit. That's right. I need some Nintendo Wii software. Those videos are coming soon. I promised you guys that stuff, and I just haven't gotten to it yet because I want to get a better capture device for my computer. Open the Explorer folder, you stupid Windows. My laptop's still on 10. It makes me want to die. Oh, really? Okay. Jerk. Modding folder. I'm going to cheat. <laughs> Tools. Oh, APK Easy Tool. Duh. Uh, that one I'll install, so that's not important. Fireworks, I actually already have. That's a photo editor. Um, I'm going to move that into this folder because that's mostly what I use for any kind of photo editing. So we're actually going to move that over in here. I don't know where I'll put that, though. I definitely am not opening that. Anyway safe folder I don't remember what's in there but it's like not what you think it's it it's not the fun stuff where did I put oh I bet you it's still on it's still on my flash drive which I'm not gonna plug in at the moment so I'll move that over later um with tech, there's nothing in here that's important for this. Yeah, this is, oh, there it is, fireworks. 
I use an older version of Fireworks because it's better. Um, safe folder. I name it safe folder because I give it an exemption to uh, Windows Defender and my antivirus software because I use a lot of modified software or patched software or like third party software that's just frankly not very good uh, for your computer and you should probably run it sandbox. Speaking of which, we will be installing sandboxy and I'll explain what that is and we're going to do it right now. So sandboxy fantastic piece of software um if you've never heard of sandboxy it's oh sandboxy plus there's a new one so basically what this program does is it's similar to mac os it makes windows very similar to mac os it allows you to run software in an environment that is sandboxed off to only a specific batch of memory and storage space and it emulates basically your folder setup so as you can see, you can also install it for portable use or as installed. I want it installed. Sandboxy is so nice. Um, I don't need this. Defender on my laptop is yelling at me. I don't really like desktop shortcuts. I normally turn off my desktop shortcuts. <laughs> Sandman. So basically what you can do is, it, you see this default box. What you can do is you can run software in this box and you can edit it, you can uh, basically control the sandbox options as you can see here. File options, file migration, um, admin write stuff, run menu, there's different program groups, forced programs, stop certain behaviors, resource access. There's so much stuff you can do with sandboxy, it's great. It's a great tool. Another one we're going to download is DN Spy, like I said. Oh, this has been discontinued. I'm not surprised by that. Uh, what was the other tool that I needed? Oh, Quick BMS. And I'll explain what that is. So let me bring up the website. Quick BMS is an amazing tool. It's basically an archival, uh, it's a minimalistic archival tool where the community will make, and it's open source, which is fantastic. The community basically makes what's called a BMS file. And these BMS files, what you can do with them is extract certain kinds of files. So if you ever watched my Pixel Cars modding video, you will know that Quick BMS is sometimes used with Pixel Cars because you can extract the game.droid file with uh, quick BMS, which is really nice. Or like, here's no one lives forever, res files, which is really freaking cool. And I'm gonna actually put that in this folder because that's really cool, actually. Can you tell I'm not overselling my golf? I so regret it. There we go. But anyway, DN Spy is right here. I'm going to move this over. That's going to take a smeckend. That's okay. And that's... Oh, man, this thing is so fast. I mean, I know this is to a mechanical drive, but whatever. I have a 4 terabyte drive to still put in here. Um, Quick BMS. I need to actually download the Quick BMS tool, but I'll show you how Quick BMS works. I need to scroll up a ton. So there's like a list of games too and file formats and things like that. There's so many things you can do with this program. It's insane. You can not only uh, export, but you can even import stuff. And as you can see, there's like open source multi-platform testing on Windows, even Windows 98. Oh my God, this goes back. Uh, works for both command line and user interface. You can re-import stuff, you can extract stuff. There's so much you can do with it. It's one of the best pieces of software for uh, anybody in the modding space that is actually considering doing more than just More than just uh, like hex editing and stuff like that. So as you can see here, 
comes with a bunch of stuff because there is a four gigabyte file limit because of it being a 32 bit software. But I'll show you this real quick. So if we go and it notepad plus plus, as you can see, this basically goes over. This is how it knows the files to extract. And I don't exactly understand making these scripts or anything like that. So just uh, bear with me. But there are some really good scripts out there for extracting files. So QuickBMS, DNSpy, um, APK Easy Tool, duh. APK Easy Tool. Awesome. One of the most useful tools there is. This makes APK editing so much easier. Oh, okay. Their Google Drive got taken down. That's admittedly not surprising. <laughs> okay. I don't personally like using the portables. I like to install it so I can actually just use it at any time. But I don't think they have an installer file anymore. They only have the portables. So I guess I'm downloading the portable. Ugh. I hate sites that do that. If I click the file, that means I want to download it, you stupid. There we go. Anyway, we're going to click here to download. Download. And it downloads. Pretty quickly, actually. There are some other tools that I need. I don't know if I'm going to bother downloading One Click Signer because you can just honestly sign stuff with APK Easy Tool. APK Easy Tool. One of the most important tools in APK modding. There you go. You should probably, if you really want to take it seriously, get IDA Pro as well. Or um, I don't remember what the one from the U.S. government is called. But uh, there was another tool. Um, what's in this? LG Flash tool. Okay, that's a whole bunch of stuff for work. Which I'll go... If you guys want a video on my setup for doing software repairs and all the stuff I've had to download and for me to go over all the tools and stuff like that, let me know in the description, description, the comments down below. Because there are a ton of really cool tools and stuff like that that I've done or gathered over the years. Um, IELTS a CPP dumper. That's what I need. I knew I was forgetting something. There we go. Let's go releases. 6.7. Wow, we're really up there. Ah, uh, Ghidra. That's what I was thinking of. Probably have Ghidra if uh, you're really getting into modding. IL2 CPP dumper. <clears throat> I feel like an easier tool would be some kind of uh, user interface for this that auto downloads it and make sure that it's up to date, which I might make something like that because there's so many options for this tool. But for right now, we're just going to do that. So we got IL2 CPP dumper. Um, I'm not going to download Ghidra right now because I don't need it. Update to that. Update to running uh, that. Yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff here. Am I missing anything? HXDDNs by ABK Easy Tool. I don't think I'm missing anything as far as APK modding. I'm going to double check. Oh my gosh. I just accidentally found my old template for uh, Sinful Android. Anybody want me to bring that back? I don't think I want to bring that back. I'll be honest. Uh, okay, whatever. Um, other than that, I don't think there's much else at the moment that I need. Everything else is pretty much an installable, and I already installed it, which would be Notepad++, HXD, a few other things. Um, I'm not really back into modding games, per se. I'm definitely going to try to mod some Steam stuff, because there's some games on Steam that I want to try to 
make a uh, menu for. I'm definitely back for doing all the lith tech stuff for sure. I miss doing that and I'll have a separate video, probably a whole series around getting set up with lith tech. I started a series in the past and I started with like step zero, which is downloading everything. But downloading everything is going to be much harder than it used to be thanks to the company that shall not be named that made that now runs a specific first person shooter that friends of mine tried to remake and the project got shut down because they shut down our discord. I can probably just say it, but anyway, that series will be coming soon because I want to get this computer set up for that. And I want to, I'm going to have an entire episode or hopefully I have my internet hardwired to my office by the time I'm able to do that. Um, I want to maybe even stream fixing the no one lives forever source code because there are so many things wrong with that source code. Well, not wrong, but like making it up to date. And there's so many other things that I want to do. And I also want to like show you guys modding uh, the Nitto games and making the Nitto game work. Um, I'm, I'm going to attempt to get the server working for challenge. Uh, Espionage made two amazing uh, C Sharp .NET based server applications, and I'd like to. The one that I understand when I look at the code is the one I'm working with right now, and that's just like one I'm working with to get back in the flow of modifying stuff with C Sharp. But after that, I will hopefully have some form of a server. I don't know don't understand this stuff anymore. I'm very out of date. <laughs> I learned that the very first time I opened up C Sharp and I looked at it like a deer in headlights. But I think that's all for now. There's not much else that I really need right now or want. Um, that's only a couple tools, I know, but a couple tools goes a long way in the modding world. So I hope you guys like the video. Uh, do the subscribe thing, I guess. I'm not going to sit here and beg for it like other YouTubers. Oh, look, I only have 20% of people subscribed to me that watch my videos. I don't even know what my ratio is, and I don't really care. But anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed. More videos hopefully coming soon. <laughs> I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. It's freaking 1240. I'm going to bed. If you made it this far into the video, one of my favorite things to do is just ask you a random question. And I got a really good one for you. I might ask this across a couple videos. Pickles or pretzels? No context, just pickles or pretzels, and why? See you guys.